All right, guys, we've officially reached the national championship, Purdue versus UConn. Let's discuss. Both these teams, arguably the best two teams all season, the most two dominating teams throughout the NCAA tournament, and probably for once in the rare occasion, we actually have the two best teams probably playing in the national championship. Both these teams throughout their tournament, throughout the season, have looked like the two best teams, and they've reached a national championship. Here we are. Purdue... Really good win today over NC State. UConn, similar good win over Alabama. Both these teams, really good basketball teams. All right, Zach Eady, Donovan Klingon are the names here, but we're going to get into a little more of the lesser-known players. UConn, in particular, I think has a really impressive starting five. Everyone in their starting five can really go, can get you buckets on any given night. As for Purdue, they've been a little sloppy at some times besides Zach Eady. Their guards can struggle at certain points, like we saw in the first half today, with pressure. So that's definitely going to come into play here. If UConn can harass Purdue's guards, Purdue might have a long day, because other than Zach Eady, they do struggle a little bit when pressured. Like we saw today, they had two backcourt violations in the first half. Struggled at some points, you know, being pressured, whether it's a half-court trap, whether it's a full-court press. They're prone to pick up their dribble, you know, in the half-court trap position. Or let's say Zach Eady has a mismatch, they'll throw him a bad pass and he'll point up. You'll see him, they'll show him like that all the time, saying throw it up because their guards are a little iffy when I've watched them. I haven't been super impressed by their guards. Really impressed with Zach Eady. They didn't really give him a lot of fouls tonight, you know, as far as usually he draws fouls really consistently. Middle Brooks did a pretty good job on him tonight for NC State and I thought it was pretty physical. I was surprised they didn't call fouls like they usually do, but I'm curious to see this Zach Eady clinging matchup. Klingon, Zach Eady, probably two of the bigger guys, you know, in college basketball. Probably the two biggest that are really well known, seven two and seven four, respectively. But UConn, other than Klingon, they actually have a lot. Like for example, Purdue, Zach Eady, he stays in almost the whole game, and he is their game plan. Uh, now they do have shooters around Zach Eady. I will say that uh, Smith, Lawyer, they can both let it rain from outside. But if they can't break the press, it doesn't matter. Okay. Like, for example, we saw a couple times tonight as well. They would double down when Zach Eady got the ball. He would look across, swing it out to the wing, the corner, and hit an open three. If they can do that, if they can handle the pressure, like I said, and get it into Eady, I think they're going to be okay against UConn. But if not, we might see UConn go on a run like they have in every one of these games. So far in the tournament, even if it's close to halftime, they always separate. You know what I mean? Like against Illinois, 30 nothing run. But let's look at it. Uh, both these teams' routes to get here. Let's start with UConn. All right, in the tournament at least, all right, they have wins over Stetson, 91-52, Northwestern, 75-58, San Diego State, 82-52, Illinois, 77-52, that 30 nothing run I was talking about. Then today versus Alabama, 86-72. I know it was closer at some points, but even though Alabama led at certain points in the first half, I don't think this game was ever really in doubt come second half. With UConn, even if it's close, what it's really going to come down to is with 10 minutes left in the game in the second half, is this game still obtainable or close or not? If it's not, if UConn already went on that run, well, it's game over. As far as Purdue is concerned, I was looking at their tournament resume. All right. Went over Grambling, 78 to 50. Went over Utah State, 106 to 67. Gonzaga, 80 to 68. Tennessee, 72 to 66. NC State, 63 to 50. Now, I did see a stat today. During the game of UConn, it said when they've held their opponents to under 50% shooting, UConn's 35-0 and on the year. When their opponents have shot over 50%, they're 0-3 on the year. So that's really the key here. Can Purdue shoot over 50% or not? And that's probably what it's going to come down to. I think this is going to be UConn's most, uh, I won't say impressive game, but most challenging game of the tournament so far. Uh, I think it's going to be their closest game for sure. I think Purdue can play with them. Now, like I said, I'm a little skeptical on Purdue's guards. I'm a lot higher on UConn's five in their depth. Uh, if they can somehow get clinging in foul trouble, I don't know if they can or not. They might be okay here. But it's going to come down to, like I said, can their guards, can Smith, Lawyer, break the press, break that half-court defense that UConn is really good at, and get it into Edie. If they can, and if they can hit shots, they're going to be able to play with them. But I've been a lot more impressed when I've watched UConn throughout the season and throughout the tournament just by, like I said, their guard play. I think Zach Eady is the best player in this game. But 
UConn's one through five is a lot more impressive to me than when I've watched Purdue. So I'm going to take UConn here. I think this is going to be a close game. Uh, a little clash of styles. UConn likes to get out and go a little bit, uh, hit threes, throw alley oops. Purdue plays a little slower at some times, but also they can get out and run too and hit threes when they're hitting shots. But a lot of it's going to come down to, like I said, can they get clinging in foul trouble? Can their guards for Purdue break the press? And can Lawyer and Smith and others hit shots for Purdue? If so, this game can be close. If not, UConn's going to run away with it. So give me UConn here. I think they're ultimately too much, but I think this is this game is going to be single digits. I think it will be close. Because like I said, UConn's lost three games. They are beatable. But it's going to take a lot to beat them. But give me UConn by eight or nine points. I think it's going to be closer, like I said, as far as single digits. But I think UConn ultimately is just too dominant, man. But who do you think wins this game? Let me know down in the comments section and why. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe.